So how do you prepare a self-assessment tax return as a property investor? Well, watch this video as I show you the most important aspects of your tax efficient tax return. Hi, my name is Simon Mishevich, your finance and tax director, helping you grow your wealth whilst reducing your tax liabilities. And in this session, I'm going to be talking about do you need to do a tax return part one. But more importantly, what goes into a, your tax return if you do. So we need to understand whether or not you need to do a tax return. Now, the first thing I would say is if you are an employee earning over £100,000, you need to do a tax return. If you're self-employed and you make £1,000 worth of profits, you need to do a tax return. And finally, if you are a property investor that has £10,000 worth of rental income, or your profits are above £2,000, you need to do a tax return. So let's have a look at what HMRC have to say about your tax return as a property investor. Let's take a look. To begin, tell us what type of property income you had during the tax year, including furnished holiday lettings. On this page, we need to know how much property income you received, if you're claiming the property income allowance, if you are, then you can't claim expenses, if you're using traditional accounting. That means you record income and expenses when you invoice customers or receive a bill. If you're not claiming the property income allowance, Enter your running costs here. All right, so an interesting video talking about the property income and where you put information into. But what I wanted to do is go into detail about that snippet of a video. And the reason for that is because it really didn't tell you what that monetary amount was. Remember the property allowable cost? It didn't say anything how much it was. So you need to kind of figure that out yourself which is kind of bizarre. So I've put a link in below this video to show you the link to go to HMRC's website where it will tell you what that tax-free allowance on property and trading income is. But typically it is about like the thousand pounds. If you've got a thousand pounds worth of cost, then you can have a, get that deduction against your property income, but then you cannot claim the other expenses. So typically I would say that's a waste of time mainly because your allowable cost for use of home could be 256 pounds. Well, you're pretty much all were almost there. And you go to a few networking meetings and see a letting agent, a estate agent and your tenants, well, your travel to and from that will get you 45p per mile for 10,000 miles in a car. So you're probably a waste of time using that thousand pounds allowance. You're better to itemize your bill. If you're not claiming the property income allowance, enter your running costs here. You can include the cost of repairs, but not improvements or upgrades. So in that video, or snippet of the video, it talks about what to put your, get your repairs, but it doesn't really tell you what repairs. It says some of it may be capital and some of it is revenue. And how do you decide between the two? Again, it was a short video, so there's no way that that video can go into the detail that I'm going to take you through now. So as you explore this, it is worth you having a look at a URL just below this video again, which talks about HMRCs and in particular, the re repair contents of the PIM, which is the property investment manual, uh, property income manual, sorry. And in that it, did, did, it provides you with a good description of what costs are allowed to be offset against your property income and which costs will be offset against your capital gains tax when you sell it. But I have a great example right in front of you and it's called Repair, Replace, Renew. And you'll notice that the first two letters is RE. And don't worry, I'm not here to set up a sermon for us to preach about stuff, no, no. All this is talking about is repair, replace, renew. It's a consistent theme. This has come directly from HMRC's website. And basically, if you repair the roof tiles that are broken on your, uh, on your roof, clearly, then you can offset that against your property income. 
If you replace the kitchens and the bathroom suites, because let's be honest, sometimes leaving that green or salmon coloured bathroom suite in the, who would leave that in the bathroom anyway? You would have to replace that if you wanted to rent out the property. So that too would be allowed to be offset against your property income. And if you renew the paintwork, you know, the kind of the purple paintwork that you have in some properties, ooh, you really do need to get rid of that. Uh, and that way you can offset that cost against your property income. Now do bear in mind, one of the caveats that uh, the pages I've given you a link to suggests that the property needs to be in a lettable condition. Well, you've got to get out a free, uh, sorry, get out a jail free card. And that is by having a buy to let mortgage. Because a term of the mortgage says that the property needs to be in a lettable condition for us to provide you with a buy to let mortgage. Hey presto, you are now proving to HMRC it's in a lettable condition. All you want to do is improve it so you can generate more income. Therefore, all of the costs may be put against the property income to reduce your tax liability. And some of the things that I have to um, have an argument sometimes is with accountants that say certain expenses cannot be offset against property income. And I'm going to give you an example here of a single glazed window that is replaced with a double glazed window or the boiler or the fuse box that's been replaced with more modern technology. And in there, I shall say naivety. Maybe that's a good choice of words. Maybe another choice of words is a non-property investor. Because if they're a property investor like you and I, then we would know that these costs are replacements and therefore allowed to be offset against your property income and not against your capital gains tax when you sell the property. Now you can of course choose to have it offset against when you sell the property, but why not have this instant gratification and have that offset straight away. And this is another thing that uh, HMRC's website talks about, which is like for like. So if you're doing a like for like replacement, then you can have the cost reduction. So this is taking a 1970s wooden cabinetry and replacing it with a more modern kitchen. It's a direct replacement because it's the same size, it's pretty much the same number of cabinets, it's okay to offset that against your property income. However, this is definitely not allowed. This is where you are taking a small kitchen and you're extending it into the dining room to make it a kitchen diner, which has now got underfloor heating. You've got nice strobe lighting going on. Strobe lighting, where am I? An iron upper. Ooh, ooh. Um, but you would have all of these kind of costs going into the pro into this kitchen, which isn't allowed. It's not like for like comparison. You've double sided the kitchen. You've got underflooring heating. You've got your strobe lights. And uh, you've also got this kind of uh, central island which never existed before so this is not a direct comparison or like for like replacement therefore this cost would be capital in nature and cannot be offset against your property income so hopefully that's clarified a few points on refurbishments i have provided you with a link below this video of a video that we've done previously that talks about all the types of refurbishment costs which will be allowed to be offset against your property income. But this is more to do with the tax return itself. So go check that video for more details. So make sure that you go to part two of the video guides, which should be appearing just above my head right now. Oh, by the way, if you're watching this right now, you might need to wait a week before that's released. So make sure you put that on your calendar. Why not sponsor our next video? Please drop me an email to understand the opportunities. Well, why not book a call with me, Simon Mishevich, your finance tax director for at least an hour to understand how we can help you grow your business without paying the tax.